everyone, and welcome back to the Sporting Global podcast. And today we're here with Ariana. And Ariana, thank you so much for taking the time. How's life in uh, in Paris? Uh, it's unique, to be honest. We were just hit with some more rules, so we now have a curfew going on. That uh, starting tomorrow night, Paris, all Parisians have a 9 p.m. curfew. You have to be in your wow. home. This is this is new. Kind of crazy, but otherwise, you know, I can't complain. We still get to play. Our games are still going on. And so in some ways, we're really lucky and we're really excited okay. to be able to be outside and, and playing and doing what we love. Well, thanks to you. Thanks, first of all, for taking the time and for, you know, it's going to be great having you here, sharing your story with us, learning, you do, digging into like your story from like, you know, how you started your football career, a little bit about you know, what you're doing, uh, you know, on the business side and how important it is as well for athletes to think a little bit more than, you know, just what's going on on the field, like player playing and, and, and kind of like think a little bit further ahead. But the first and foremost, I think it would be great if you could share a little bit about, you know, your story, your background. And uh, I mean, like, why, what was it about football? I know you're California, like, you know, US, it, it's not like a very typical thing choosing the pad of soccer, I would say. I don't think it is necessarily super well first off actually I say, thank you for inviting me and I hope you know we can put some good content in content out there that at least some people get some value from this but uh we'll Absolutely. see what happens no I'm, um, I'm certain about that <laughs> <laughs> no I, I mean I feel like yes and no football is becoming more and more popular in the states and growing up right everybody plays a sport I think almost every kid yeah, I knew yeah. at some point or another you you get into organized sports we have a really big Yeah. after school programs and things right. like that and everybody signs their kids up and the whole soccer mom is uh, <laughs> yeah, a that famous clothing. term famous term exactly car right. companies have built their whole campaigns around it clothing companies have built campaigns around it so right that I, definitely there and it crosses over to baseball mom and basketball mom and, and kind yeah of like, yeah like, so with soccer no it's it's kind of a funny story and it's a story right. I'm excited back, but um So I started playing soccer because of my older sister and my mom, but nice. basically my dad had always wanted boys and yeah. he was lucky and blessed to have my sister and I. And <laughs> so he decided when he didn't get his boy to become his American football champion that he right. assumed he would, um, <laughs> that we would be extremely girly and do ballet and tap dance and things right. like that. And, and we started, I've got the photographic proof, but I was horrible at it <laughs> and um so thank god that soccer found me right. but one day my mom came across a, a recreational soccer flyer and decided that my sister should be signed up nice. and at the time my sister was a little chubbier so my mom wanted her to become more active and kind of run yeah, and my yeah, mom yeah. Had no idea anything about soccer yeah and she just signed her up and came home and informed my dad that this is what happened and I'm sure words were exchanged as <laughs> any old Italian family will happen but um she signed her up my sister played her first year and my second year my dad signed up to be my sister's coach so the rest nice. is history he was full on <laughs> and because she's my big sister and I always want to be like her I right. wanted to play soccer too right. also made it easier taking two kids to the same field and, that, and that's having a good point. that's a good point <laughs> so that's kind of how my original soccer origins came and then once I was there I was always a really tall skinny kid right and I think this might happen in Europe, but it really happens in the States where tall, skinny kids play forward and mm. squat chubby kids play goalkeeper. Right. Again, my sister's stature led her to become a goalkeeper. Right. And uh, I, again, wanted to be like her. So I wanted to try to be in the goal. And as soon as I got in the goal, it was no fear, no skill, but no fear. And nice. the no fear definitely helped my career progressed because coaches wanted to work with me or train me because they can't really teach the no fear part. They can give you the technical skills right. if you work hard enough. Yeah. Yeah. And that was it. And everybody kind of, my sister knows I tell this story and it is the truth, but today she's gorgeous and beautiful and like her past is way past. It's not right. Nobody put her in the goal anymore. So she's good. <laughs> um, yeah. So I kind of, my career per se took off quite quickly just because I was tall and right. I would go balls to the walls, go at people, break away everything. <laughs> like it's an advantage uh, as a keeper too, though, right? And it's like having the, the height. And I think like, you know, like one of the things you talk about, I'm not going to like, you know, dive too much into it, but, you know, to talk about that, like no fear, you know, like, or just like, and I think like a goalkeeper needs to have that, you know, it's like, I was probably one of the reasons why I didn't, didn't go like the keeper way. I was like, 
I don't want that ball in my face, you know? <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. I've been hit so many times, yeah. face, yeah. body parts everywhere. Yeah, and also just diving and hitting the ground and getting dirty and right. scraped up was never a problem for me. So yeah. um, it worked out well. Nice. <laughs> my mom definitely knows how to clean up scratches and, and band-aid and peroxide and all that good stuff. The, the but proper I, soccer mom comes to play. You know? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Like getting blood out of my socks and right. cleaning the dirt and grass stains. She was re- she's really good at that. But <laughs> so because of that though, at the time the system in the US has changed a lot. Almost yeah. to the point where I don't I can't even explain to you the system anymore. I'm not really sure right. how it works. But back then with yeah, our club soccer tricky. and our ODP system, um mm. from a young age I started into the ODP system and and played always on the state team and the regional team and the youth national team and things like that. Right. And then we, obviously it's very popular for Americans to go to university, especially playing sport. I think it is a huge bonus for, I think some people might look at it as a negative because we don't go pro now. Again, this is changing a little bit, but at Mm. the time we always went to university and I'm really thankful that we have this opportunity to play football at a high level Yep. and also continue our studies and right. balance them together and learn how to balance them together. I think it's a, a really yep. beneficial attribute that we're Absolutely. taught from a young age in the States. And so I did go to university in the States, but during my university years, there wasn't a women's professional league at this time. Mm. There had been, and then it stopped. And so I knew I wanted to be a professional. Like I'd grown up always, the dream was to play professional football. So right. Europe was the next stop. And yeah, started making calls, started interacting with older players that I'd known had come abroad and, and found my way originally to Sweden was the first team oh. that I went to. And then in Sweden, and even before that, I knew that it would be the easiest if I had two passports. So I started like digging into my family line and lineage and it took me actually two years, but I was able to find my family line and, and get all the documentation to become an Italian citizen. So oh, there I got you go. passport and well, because cool. of that, it made it much easier to play in yeah, all the clubs yeah. in Sweden can imagine so i mean like obviously you were uh i mean like obviously the nordics is sort of like uh early step for a lot of i guess uh you know football soccer or i, I guess we're like you've been in europe so long so we can call it football Absolutely. um but uh but i mean like it, it's been like a very typical places i guess like for development as well so like how is your experience like being in sweden and and, and so forth i mean like it's kind of similar to playing in norway in a sense for like a women's team so i I like, played in Norway too. Oh, you did. All right. Did. Yeah. What, what, what team did you play for? <laughs> FL Fart. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm I'm familiar with them. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, how was how was your experience though, though, of like playing in the Nordics? Like, what was your first impressions and stuff like that? So, I mean, honestly, going to Sweden was my first for, like professional experience yeah. in the first place. So I didn't have much to compare to versus right. university, and anything yeah. compared to American university is completely different. Just our whole yeah, yeah, yeah. mentality of being in the weight room, how we train, what. Right coaches usually focus on is different from even sure. now me in Paris yeah so yeah. that was different it was also different trying to figure out what to do with my time just yeah. because going from a collegiate athlete of having to balance everything your social life your football your studies to now right. being a pro and training for an hour and a half a day and then you have the rest of the day to do whatever it's right. <laughs> it's actually complicated that might sound weird but I don't like to sit down and like play video games or do nothing all day so yeah, yeah. It was different. It's and funny also, though, because uh, when I talked to Martin, uh, Martin Melda, I don't know if you, you maybe like played against her or, or somehow, but she's like the, the Norwegian uh, women's captain on the Nor- Norwegian national team. She plays for Chelsea uh, at, the, at this point. So we had her on the podcast and I said like, what do you, how do you spend your days? You know, like when you're, when you're done and I'm like, is it like, is it the is it the same as the boys she was like everyone is like playing fifa you know it's sort of like the the classic things i was like what are, what are you guys doing so so how is how are you kind of like dealing with this and and yeah what was so, your kind of like way so i am not a fifa player i do not play video games that, that's totally fine i mean like we're not, uh, we're not i mean i'm not actually like completely <laughs> oblivious to this i have some games on my ipad that i'll mess around with but yeah, yeah. um i never really got into playing like fifa type stuff so I am really big I'm gonna sound like such a dork I'm really big into reading and understanding what's happening in football nice and other things like that so I also really like taking online classes so I've done tons with like Coursera and all the other random online yeah, yeah. Classes that you can do yeah lots of that thinking back to Sweden that's way over a decade ago which kind of yeah. really aged me so I can't even remember how I was trying to 
use my time back then <laughs> but yeah. but um yeah so once though I left Sweden I went to Italy and in Italy not only was it a time factor of filling my time in a productive way right. but it also became a financial thing our team never paid us on time and we were always behind on paychecks and I didn't want to have to call my parents and ask them right. to help out yeah. so I kind of created my own little business teaching English and got lots of different students and just created this whole little ecosystem for myself in order to have cash and yeah it. well I guess as you need you know like and yeah so so that kind of worked out well and and it was really great it made me feel really independent and like I always had lots of cash in my pocket so that was <laughs> not right. lots I mean but just yeah yeah no, cash flow I get it. So yeah, and that just led me to always kind of wherever I played, I was always trying to either create a business, find a business, learn right. something. Um, I'm really big on just improving myself and and I like lists and I like checking stuff off and knowing that at the yeah. end of the day I was productive and I learned something or I did something or I helped right. somebody. Um so for me, if I just sat and played FIFA, I would just feel <laughs> no, I, no, honest, absolutely. but that's just my personal thing. Yeah, I, yeah. no, I mean like of it's almost to a fault because I can't just sit down and do yeah, nothing, yeah. like relax. I, I can't turn off and I, sometimes I wish I could. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like it, it all has its ups and downs, right? I mean, like, I, I guess, I guess, kind of like going back to the st student athlete perspective too, of like, you know, balancing all of these things. I think you also like are getting like that uh, almost like thought process that you like, you gotta, you know, try to like fill it out and like think more than just being an athlete do you feel like that's kind of been part of um you know why you're doing what you're doing or like more as of like that's just who you are you know or like a balance between the both i think it's a lot of who i am and i yeah. think it's just uh the way i grew up and even as a kid like i never i couldn't really sit down and watch tv if i was right. watching tv i was doing something with my hands so i yeah. like was beating or right. like it was stuff where the girls make knots and like you make bracelets and jewelry and yeah, there was yeah, yeah. always something like I I couldn't I have to be multitasking I don't know why <laughs> like I cannot just chill right just, right like, no always active with your hands I guess like I yeah. mean like it fits fits well with the whole keeper <laughs> keeper thing too um, but I'm kind of curious as well though because obviously it was a big step you know for you moving from the U S to like Europe obviously you know Sweden first you know touching upon you know both norway and the, and italy and now france and i'm like thinking like what was some of like what kind of decisions and challenges were you facing and like what was some of the things that you had like that you were thinking about you know like to, because it's a big step you know and it's not for everyone to take that no step. i mean it's definitely not and some people come and they hate it and they go back and i think also understanding your limits is is a positive thing and yeah. you learn and you learn a lot about yourself personally and, and what you can take what you can't sure. take your limits yeah, yeah. um language and culture i almost think the culture is even bigger than not knowing the language right but they kind of play into each other but the cultural shock and the cultural differences that you come across can be really difficult sometimes and why yeah. people respond to you the way they do when you're not used right. to that um it can be difficult and not having friends or uh, a lot of times when you're the foreigner, you're always just typecast and put into this bubble. If there's other foreigners on the team, you automatically have to be friends. Right, right. Like sometimes you don't get along with that person. Yeah, so. yeah no, I get it. No, uh, I get it. So that can be difficult sometimes. I've been pretty lucky. I've gotten along with a lot of my players and we've become good friends, but there's been times where there's been a foreigner where we just, our personalities were not going right. to click. It's also normal. It's human nature, yeah. but it can be difficult then if you're always thrown in and supposed to partner with that person. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, yeah, I, I think it's like, you know, people sometimes they do just think like, oh, but like since you're foreigners, you have something in common, right? You're like coming <laughs> coming internationally. But like, as you say, like one of your biggest challenges was like cultural, right? So I mean, I, like if you have like, okay, US culture and then like, you know, Asian culture or what it might be, right? It's like hugely different. And like, even that is like, I mean, like I would, like if I like say like I play with like someone from like or do business like okay that's that's more related but so since I I never became pro I just went went the business route but but uh, say like I do business with someone in the Nordics I mean like it's a lot easier but like doing business in the U.S. I would say is like completely different it's completely Absolutely. different but, but yeah it's a lot different though too especially from the women's perspective one when I started 
financially we didn't make that much money so right. we also didn't have a lot of spending money in order to go out or to yeah. regularly go to the cafe or to regularly yeah. do a lot of things you you yeah. had to pay attention so it was also difficult to get out and meet new people yeah because you're trying yeah. to save money and not spend right. all your money yeah and even within the team sometimes teams are really close and sometimes teams are an extracurricular activity where people have their friends and their family and and their bubble or their circle so sometimes it can be really hard to try to find new friends and and outside sources because we're professional football players it's not as though we can go out all the time or, or put ourselves in certain situations where you might right. meet new people yeah it's not easy and especially now though you know more than ever you know like <laughs> with the current situation like how do you like obviously just to touch upon that like how do you like dealing with 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 this and especially like now like with the with the new uh situation you just mentioned with the the time schedule more or less that you have in france like how is how is that how so are you holding up <laughs> tomorrow night tonight's the last night we're allowed to go out so now you're just like celebrating <laughs> um no i mean in some ways i think we're lucky because we're used to being more homebodies or not we don't go out like every weekend we don't yeah, go yeah. Out hour or like out right, at night right. and interact with a lot of people on a regular basis anyways sure, sure. just because of our life schedules for yeah. most of us so with that we're a little lucky because we're kind of used to this hermit style of living yeah, yeah. but at the same time now a lot of us and my teammates have all been really great at it when we do have a day off we like to go into paris or try to go be tourists or go shopping nice. or a little more active and unfortunately right. now especially for us one you clearly don't want to get it yourself but right. there's also a big fear that you don't want to get it and then transmit it to your whole team and feel right. that like feel bad because of it right so everybody really tries to stay away from other people which also sucks because it's hard to interact with people when you're scared that they're gonna right give you. and then it's like i mean like of course it's like a lot of stuff you can do digitally but it's it is it is a little bit different you know meeting meeting face to face and you know having that having that connection but i guess like at the end of the day though still like i think like as you mentioned as well you still have like your team right and can meet up like like at least obviously you know training practices matches and like kind of like have that community nonetheless in a sense uh, so i guess like obviously that that probably helps a little bit than like it not. does i think it is it is in some ways also better for us because we are together so much and on the field without masks on when we play we clearly right, right, right. Mask. so it is a lot easier to invite some of my teammates over to my home and hang out with them and have that right. human interaction and connection yeah. Where possibly if you're working in an office, yeah. you're not going to do that because yeah. you do not have your masks on when you're together. So right. we are lucky in this way. Yeah, no, for sure. And I was thinking a little bit about like, obviously we're talking a lot about your sort of like proactiveness and like always trying to do something else. And, you know, now obviously, you know, you're, you're actively, you know, working as a sponsorship manager for PSG Femme and, uh, Maybe I'm pronouncing that right, wrong, or right. I don't know. A lot like a French, French speaker here, but uh, and and also you know being able to speak at some key events. Or you're going to speak at a World Football Summit, uh, you know now. And and I'm just thinking like, what have you learned so far from this experience of like being proactive? And and the other thing is is why is it important, you know, for athletes to focus on stuff that is not just on the field, you know, from from your point of view. I, yeah, I'm going to definitely pr like emphasize my point of view is this because I know a lot of people that don't have the same point of view and to right. each their own. My personal point of view, though, is that whenever I was only playing football, yeah. I focused so much on football that when it didn't go right, right. I was just ruined. Like, right. you go to practice and something goes wrong for the rest of the afternoon, you're thinking about whatever that mistake was or whatever argument you got into with one of your teammates or with the coach said something to you you're thinking about it the whole evening you're still thinking about it the next morning and until you get to practice and hopefully make up for or yeah, yeah. For all the situation yeah it's just weighing on you and right. you have it over and over and every day and you are focused so much on the little things that are practice that when you step away from the big picture it really doesn't make that big of a difference or matter right. that much right and i found that when i can do other things I'm able to to step away and kind of close my, okay, football was there. Now mm. I'll switch, turn my brain into a different direction. And the next day I come back fresh and I don't not mad at my coach because he said something to me because I haven't yeah. thought about 50 times in 50 different ways right. Right. or how I should have responded, could have responded or should yeah. have done something. And so for me personally, having an outlet such as studying, which I went back to school while I was playing or my side jobs that I've always had, 
I what? feel like it's made me a better player because I'm able to send like categorize these parts of my life and it just makes me better and I enjoy it better. Looking into the future, the beginner faces a choice that leads him to the triumph or not. Being surrounded by like-minded professionals can be the best guarantee that you actually take that crucial career step. Sport in Global is a digital network for sports jobs. It gives you the chance to be involved in the sports industry no matter who you are, regardless of gender, nationality, and experience. Our AI system matches up talent with human resources. Candidates who align with the company's values and needs immediately get shortlisted. It saves time for HR and increases the opportunities available to applicants. The platform identifies tailor-made recommendations based on user needs, so you're always aware of the possibilities out there right now. Sport in Global is a place where students gain key tips about jobs and build the valuable connections that are essential for people at the beginning of their career path. The path from candidate to champion starts with a single step in the right direction. Sign up to Sport in Global. Sport in Global, the best way to enter the sports industry. Right. No, and I think I think obviously you know as as you emphasize too, it's like your obviously you got to find your path, but I think it's uh, obviously important as well. I'm, nonetheless, like we talked a lot with Maida and then and also Ingrid Ilan, which is a former uh, national player as well. She plays for EL Sandviken in Norway. I don't know if you're familiar, but um, so I mean, like, I mean, like, it, I think it's always interesting to like look at like the ones that are like, you know, thinking a little bit larger than what's on the field. And I, I mean, like, it doesn't matter if you're like playing in for women's team or if it's a men's team, I think it's sort of like, okay, what are you thinking? Like once you're done with your professional career, because at the end of the day, you also have a, have a limit, right? Of like, you can't be a pro player until like you're, you're 60. So yeah, yeah. every so, career, every professional football career does have an end date. There is right. an expiration, yeah. no matter what. And hopefully it expires the way you want it to. Right. But unfortunately, we never know. One practice, one play, one moment yeah. can change everything. And I right. don't think you focus on that because if yeah. you're focused on the end, what's the point of playing now? Yeah. But at the same time, you need to have that mental image or understanding that this will end. It is right. physically impossible to keep right. going. Here. Nobody can do it. Not yet, anyways. Has anybody yeah. proved different? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think sometimes for athletes, we can get so wrapped up in our image and who we are when we're playing that it is a huge loss when you stop playing and if you don't have that new challenge that new objective right. it's killer for a lot of athletes and it makes sense every day you're going into training trying to be better trying to do your best trying to win something right that once you stop not only do you not have that everyday activity but you don't have a new objective oh it's gonna be horrible i can't even imagine right and, and this is obviously why i think it's important you know to emphasize on um, you know what like how can you begin and like when should you start sort of like thinking about what what can you do you know and i mean like i'm not i'm not saying like of course like start building your your uh, prepare for the day <laughs> you end but but sort of like what are the little things you can do you know and we're going to touch upon that a little bit later but before we go in there i'm kind of like curious to just hear um a little bit more about like kind of like the restrictions you've been seeing like particularly in with PSG fam like with uh, in France like in terms of like playing matches and everything like security measurements the the the, the initiatives have been taken there and and what sort of like what do you think we will see moving forward and also how will this impacts or like the interactions with fans which I mean like it's a huge part for athletes uh, because sure. obviously it's more on the digital side but but, you know, at the end of the day, we're talking about like, you know, having fans in the stadium, uh, you know, reaching out to like, you know, maybe giving them a hug. Maybe it's like, you know, I don't know, like, you know, taking pictures with them. No, for um, sure. Um, so I yeah. think it's women, in a weird way. We're really lucky that football hasn't boomed yet because we don't have 50,000 people at our games right. every day. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes if you play for a smaller team or in a smaller country or it's just not a big game or it's raining outside, you right. can have maybe a few hundred people. So. Yeah, yeah. With some of these limitations for women, I don't think it really, not, I think saying affects us is a bad way to say it, but right. we're able to play with yeah. an empty stadium and I don't think it affects us that much per right. se. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, 
And fortunately, here at PSG, we have some of the best fans in the world. And I don't say that just because I'm at PSG. We literally do. We have fans that come and light off fireworks and like have big right. bands and go crazy right. for the women's Amazing. team. And it's actually historically because they were kicked out of the men's team a few years ago. And so they all like came to our game and then it just became a thing. So it's absolutely fabulous. And I do think sometimes, I mean, they definitely give you a little push and that's amazing that they're there. Yeah. But as women in general, even though we have this at PSG, you're still used to playing with your national team or you've been in other situations where you don't play in front of anybody and you're still going to play as hard. So I think maybe women have a little advantage in this, that fans, no fans, they've done it both before so right right so it's good i think for a lot of men it might be really difficult like not hearing your name chanted or not <laughs> yeah. you know getting the crowd pumped up or maybe even the opposite for some people they get really hyped to prove the crowd wrong when it's an away game or something like right. that i'm right. sure this is absolutely having an effect um other things that are a little strange is kind of not being able to hug your teammates all the time or like really mm. touch people <laughs> it sounds weird right. but that, that right. human interaction yeah, yeah. like yeah Obviously, we do if there's a big goal scored, but yeah, we're limited. Our doctors are always telling us to keep our masks on once we're not on the field. If we have lunch or dinner together, you sit down, you can take your mask off to eat. But if you get back up to get more food, you have to remember to put your mask on. And Interesting. It's just a change of life. Just All always, right. I'm always walking back to my apartment because I forgot my mask or I forgot it in the car and you have to go back. So. so, So how do you see like this? I mean, like. Of course, like we don't know 100% when this thing is going to end, end, you know, or like if it's going to end. But, but I'm just thinking like at the end of the day, there will probably come another pandemic, you know, at like some point. So I'm like, like from your side, what do you think is going to like, do you think it's going to impact sort of like, say like if this coronavirus is just going to like, say like stop tomorrow, like just hypothetically. And like, you think like they will, they will keep some of the new like measurements just to like, kind of like, limitize it or do you think like it would just sort of like go back to normal that's this is sort of like my thought i don't think i don't think they'll keep measurements that you have to keep a mask on if, if people aren't sick or something or they're right. they're definitely gonna get fans back in the stadium that's a really important yeah yeah needs to happen especially from a business and financial standpoint yeah i think there are definitely some stuff though within the business model that will change i think it'll be interested to see if clubs start to slow down on buying big players and if they start capping salaries and things like that because i think they just understood that because of this and because of media and broadcasting rights um and how many unfortunately situations are really financially dire yeah they're gonna have to change their business model and the structure right but i think this might have positive lasting effects understanding that you can't just keep spending and doing things that the clubs were doing and that the clubs with a lot of money were just going really high and the medium clubs were having difficulty. So in some ways, maybe this will have a positive effect on the football industry in order to kind of reevaluate where money was going and how money was going. Yeah. I know it's it's trying to like to balance it out and maybe you don't have as much of a gap because I know I think, I think a lot of clubs has been, you know, impacted briefly by the entire situation, both financially and, and I mean, like, I guess also for, for you at uh, PSG FM of like, you know, you, the staff and around that being involved, you know, probably being impacted greatly about the situation, obviously, you know, not having fans in the stadium too, but, but also running it, you know, as a normal, normal club, like structuring, like the games, like, of course, like the travel restrictions and, and everything impacting that too. And how was that sort of like in the beginning though, when, when, because I, I mean, like, I would assume you guys are traveling all over France France more or less and, and playing games and like were there any like immediate like changes of like you so, could only play in certain regions or how would how was no, that? No, that hasn't happened. But for example, our last game, not last week, the, our last away game, yeah, was in Dijon, and it's a place that we would usually take the train, right? But they chose, and I think it was it was a, a safety issue not to put us on a train with people. Right. We don't we don't like buy the whole train for ourselves yeah yeah yeah. and so that had to change and we had to take a much longer bus ride yeah and the train is obviously kind of easier and more comfortable than a long long bus ride right so things like that change for us yeah um the way we can eat has also changed at the hotels they have to individually wrap a lot of the food you can't Mm. like just open buffet anymore right 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 um so small things but not dire things again like i'm really thankful that we still get to play and we have the opportunity to keep playing so just a key thing though really it's that you know, it's fine 
yeah and that you were at the end of the day it's about you being able to play right and playing the games and being able to do what you like um i'm thinking like a little bit around like just some tips that you have for athletes like looking to su succeed in the european football industry like what are some of the things they and like if you just look at like i would i would say like maybe people like that need to like kind of like take that step moving away maybe it's from the u.s maybe it's like from other country like say like you know maybe australia or or like to be an athlete or to work in the business now, now i'm talking athletes athlete side to like going going there and like wanting to succeed in european football industry like what are what are some of the tips you have for for them I would say really try as, as best you can. It is really difficult to learn a language, especially if you know you're only going to, yeah. if you only have a contract for one season, but I feel like making that effort to learn the language and understand the culture through the language right. really shows the people and the fans from that country that you care and you respect their ways. Right. I think this is really important. I think try to be, if you're not super outgoing or comfortable, like going outside your comfort zone, I think you need to try to be, because again, just being nice, friendly is really beneficial and having a smile on your face, even if you're not super happy is also beneficial. Right. And even finding outside friends that can maybe teach you more about the culture and your surroundings is, a, is pretty helpful and it will give you an outlet away from your team. Right, no, for sure. And, and I'm like thinking as well, like just as a final tips here, if for those that are, you know, also want to kind of like take their career steps or like thinking a little bit about their sort of like future career steps after they're done playing, like while they're playing, like what are some of the stuff that they can do? Like, what do you, what would you suggest them to like start? Maybe it's like sort of like the basics, you know, of like, how, I think, can, you, how can you start like preparing yourself a little bit for, you know, be, at the end of the day, it's going to happen. Right. I think understanding who you are is really important. And things that you like and you enjoy outside of football. Right. So I don't know if you like the law, if you like photography, if you like anything, like you can take your hobbies and in theory, those can also become careers after. Right. And I think if you don't know what those are, I think those are totally okay. And experiment and learn something, go online. Like there's so many online classes and especially now the good thing about COVID is it's put a lot of things online at your fingertips that you can take online classes for free. You can take master classes. You can right. read a book in 10 minutes because of the new audio, you know, or the, the smart, the smaller yeah. chips. And I think maybe just taking an hour out of your time, out of your day to learn something new will start to guide you in what you like and what you don't like. And learning what you don't like is really important as learning what you really do like. And I think you have the opportunity and the time to kind of just branch out and it's also entertaining it's a new way to entertain yourself rather than just zoning out yeah the fifa learning something is never going to hurt you it's never going to be a bad thing right so i think these online classes meeting new people having new experience are all really beneficial to help you figure out where you want to take your life once this career is over and you get to start a new career and i think the really cool thing that we need to pay more attention to is that the football industry has so many positions and so many career opportunities yep. that almost anything you study in school, you don't have to study sports management if you want to work in sports. There's right. lawyers, there's tax lawyers, there's doctors, right. there's physical therapists, there's HR, there's every, right. every normal, quote unquote, normal career that happens outside sport. You have that within the sporting industry. And I think right. people forget that. They think that they have to study sport management or understand sport. And I think you can become really good in a different field and that can cross over in the sport industry. Right. No, for sure. And I, well, you just have a final question here from, from my side. And I'm just thinking like, um, for, for those, obviously we have a lot of young students, professionals kind of like, you know, trying to find their career path in the sport business world. And, uh, I think like if there's someone out there that wants to maybe like, you know, explore working for like, a women's football team or, or so forth, you know, like uh, what kind of tips do you have for them? And like, what, what, what would be some of like the key opportunities do you think like uh, a team, like for instance, like yours would be looking at like, you know, maybe getting some help with. I think, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on now too, especially the data industry, data science, yeah. is becoming a big 100%. one, understanding data, like wearable technology. So tech is becoming super big in football. Right. 
there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. And I think really understanding it, and especially if you're an athlete, you really understand what happens on the field. And it's super valuable in the business room that people who've never played or really don't understand what's happening. They just don't know. And I think these cross over a lot, but I think, um, you know, having a specialty and really understanding if you are the best data scientist, every club will want you. Right. If like set yourself apart, try to build new projects, platforms, um, get involved in the conferences and especially networking. I think the sports industry is really a big, big crossover of networking and it's 100%. super important to start something and get your name out there and allow people to, to set you apart. Everybody wants to work in sports. There's yeah. so many people that are trying to get a job in sports. <laughs> 100%. That if you don't set yourself apart, it's not going to really help you. No, no. Like, what's what's your value, right? What's what's the value that you can bring? Uh, and I think, you know, without going too much in what we do, I think you know one of the key things we wanted to focus on is like, how do you like to focus on like what is your personal value, right? Like, what makes you unique? Like, what is your values? How can you find organization that align with your values? Because I think that's important that you think not only about obviously, you know, what is your skills, but, but what do you stand for? And like awesome. find organization that align with that, because more than ever, like if you're going to be happy in whatever you're doing, you know, providing value, you need to work for organizations that, you know, think that way or like has that sort of, sort of perspective, because that's what also going to make you, you know, produce the most effort and, and provide, provide the most value. So I think that's, that's really key. And I mean, like, I guess it's sort of like the same, in a sense, when you are choosing clubs, you know, to play for in a sense too, that you got to think about, you know, does this club fit my values and what I believe in? And am I here just for, you know, like, what is, what is the reason I'm playing for this club? Like, what, why is this important? Like, why should I choose this club compared to others? And I, I of course, like I get, it's not always like you have, you know, that choice, <laughs> plenty of options or like you only have that option and that's fine too. And sometimes and I mean, like when you're young as well, like sometimes you just got to grab the opportunity that is for there, or sometimes you just got to create the opportunity, which sort of you've been, you know, focusing a lot on as well. When you, when you started like, okay, how can I get abroad? Right. So you started like yeah. reaching out, you started like taking that steps. So at the end of the day, if you want to be a, you know, pro athlete, or if you want to be a pro, pro sport business professional, you got to take the first steps, you know, you got to be proactive at the end of the day. No one Absolutely. is waiting. No one is waiting for you. No, nobody's going to knock down your door. And even, even look at the best football players we know. You talk about Ronaldo and Messi and stuff. Yeah. You can watch Ronaldo's social media. He's in the gym. He's working twice as hard. Yeah. And a lot of people, he could just sit back and done. And he can live off his Pretty earning much. thus far yeah. and his name thus far. But he's still in there working as hard as possible. And he's creating his future. He's not waiting for the clubs to build yeah. it for him. He's doing it himself. And I think these are lessons that we kind of forget. Sometimes people think that it, it just falls into the player's laps or it falls into people right. in the industry and it doesn't. And I think a really big recommendation I can give to any students who are trying to get in the industry and you're networking and especially on um, the networking platforms like LinkedIn, write a message. Like if you just message somebody, they're not going to look at your picture and your student and be like, oh, I really want to connect with them write them a message and let them know you and see who you right. are and take extra effort and separate yourself from the rest of the pack. If you right. don't separate yourself, you're just another sheep that wants to work in the sporting industry. Right. Or they can use Sporting Global. <laughs> sporting Global, our platform. Yeah. Well, and Sporting, exactly. I don't know. Within your platform though, can you talk to people? Yeah, we're, uh, we're about like, you can connect and then we're about to, uh, we're still in beta, but we're going to have the networking element where you can chat as well. So that's coming. Exactly. In, uh, so when you can chat, shortly. so make sure people are actually like interacting, you know? Yeah. It's, like no, it's, it's a very important part of the, the part and like one of our values is, is network, it's network experience and knowledge. So everything we do has to fit within those. So we know how important it is. And we're trying to help those students, you know, network, get their foot in the door and, and learn. And this is why we're doing the podcast. So, I mean, like, I don't know, Ariana, if you have any final, final comments or, or remarks. No, I mean, that's like a really big one. I, as people see PSG that I work for PSG and they automatically want to connect with me for this yeah. basic reason. And I understand that and I get that, but, and it's not me being so amazing, but there's 20 people every day that want to link up with me. Yeah. I don't always say yes. I'm really sorry. I just don't. If you send me a message, I always say yes. Like yeah. you will enter my network if you send me a message just because 
I find value that you took time to write me a message. Right. And I think most people do. And especially in this industry, if you want to set yourself apart, you need to start building your own name. Like athletes build their names on social media and stuff to get the sponsors. And yeah. it's the same thing in business. You are your own brand, whether yeah. you're an athlete or you're working in the industry and you need to create that brand. You need, as you said, create your values, understand who you are and you need people to know who you are and just asking them to like you or asking them to accept you. It's not enough anymore. Yeah, no, it, it, you're touching upon very, uh, something very important here. And that's like, I mean, like, it's so easy to connect with someone, but what are you, I mean, like to click that connect button or what it might be, but like, what, like, what kind of value are you providing? Like, and why, why should they, why should you like talk with them? Like, what's, what's the value, right? And like, what are you bringing to value for them? Because at the end of the day, like, you know, we talked a lot about like, when I was in the U.S., we talked a lot about informational interviews. I know you've probably been part of a little bit around that as well, like doing that. And, and I mean, like we were always talking about, like, you know, preparing for like, who do you speak with? Like, do you know their story? Like, what are you how are you catching their interest? And like, why should they spend like, you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes talking with you? Like, what's the value for them? And I think like when you're approaching people and connecting with them, like this is the sort of things like you need to think about. Like, like, don't just connect with me or Ariana just because, I mean, like Ariana is playing for PSG uh, or like, and also working there, but like, like, what is it? You know, what, what is she, why are you going to connect with her? What's the value? Exactly. That's, that's very important. So with that, Ariana, I would just like, thank you so much for taking the time. It's been a pleasure having you part of the podcast. I hope, I hope it was fun for, for you as <laughs> well. And uh, I'm sure we will, uh, connect very shortly and nonetheless i wish you all the best with the rest of the season uh you know stay safe during the restrictions and uh of course uh, best of luck with the world football summit thank you That's really excited. my first time going so i'm very excited to be there and thank you for inviting me on your podcast i'm excited to see once you guys get out of beta how i can network and, and use your platform oh yeah 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 no we're uh we're, we're getting there step by step. So everyone out there, make, make sure to sign up at Sporting Global and uh, connect with uh, Ariana as well. And uh, because now you have to make your profile. <laughs> and then uh, as, as with every video podcast, whatever we do, we always finish with Visnakis, which means see you later in Norwegian. Okay, I'm not going to try that, but. Yeah, I mean like it, yeah, you we'll, that, that's totally fine. You can see it in, you can say it in French. You did a talk. Nice, nice. I think that's how we would say it. I'm not I sure. No idea. <laughs> All right. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Later. Bye.